What is going on you guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Farid and I'm sitting right now across two of the prominent Paribus team members here at Rare Bloom. Now this is going to be a two-day event going on between yesterday actually and today. So today's the last day um, and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dennis as well as Wilson from the Paribus team. How are you guys doing? I'm well, how you doing? I am great. I'm excited to see you guys. I did not expect to see you guys here. Um, I was tipped off by another prominent member within the Paribus community. And I actually just ran into you guys yesterday while you guys were giving another interview. So it looks like you guys are in high demand here. How are you guys feeling about that? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We meet a lot of people. So we gave a couple of interviews, um, meeting the right people, getting mm -hmm. our name out there, you know, uh, that's why we're here. It's been a good event for us so far. Good, good. I'm glad to hear. And, you know, this is literally what I was looking forward to, too. You know, networking, meeting new people. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Paribus is a project that I really like and I really support. Um, and so I'm really honored to have the opportunity to give you guys this interview. And so with that said, Dennis, do you mind giving us a quick rundown on what Paribus is and what you guys are bringing to the crypto ecosystem? Sure. So Paribus is essentially a borrowing lending platform. Mm -hmm. um, it supports crypto assets mm -hmm. in, in its traditional form. With, this is Bitcoin, ADA, Ethereum, etc. as a collateral. But mm -hmm. what sets us apart is we also support uh, what we call exotic crypto assets, which mm -hmm. are NFTs, metaverse lands, LP tokens and synthetics. Um, so you can borrow against these assets and we give valuation based on AI uh, and it's not P2P. So if there is liquidity, it's immediate and you have instant access to liquidity without having to sell your asset outright. Got it. And that's actually one of the biggest things that drew me to Paribus was the fact that you guys are not just dealing with native assets, but you guys are dealing with synthetic assets yeah. as well as NFTs, right? And so I think the NFT space specifically um, is still kind of like a wild west, uh, but I'm excited for what you guys are doing. And I do actually want to talk a little bit more um, about that AI system that you guys, you know, um, are basically working on right now. Um, and so with that said, um, how long have you guys been around the crypto ecosystem? So uh, myself, I've been in, within the crypto ecosystem for six years now, mm -hmm. um, but the Paribus project started about 18 months ago, mm -hmm. um, officially, and we've been uh, live, or we've been trading as a token for the last 13 months now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's, that's the basic story around Paribus. Awesome, awesome. Do you mind if we get an introduction from sure. Wilson as well? Sure, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for having us here. You know, it's been great to, uh, to meet with you here in person. So it's been an awesome event. Uh, my name is Wilson. I'm the COO and co-founder of Paribus. And uh, I've been in the space for about um, three, four years now. So I have uh, definitely, you know, a, a lot to, to learn uh, from, you know, Dennis as, as, as well as Simon. But I'm definitely really happy to uh, be joining uh, everyone here today. I think it's been a really great event and uh, looking forward to doing more of these. Yeah, no, for sure. And obviously we're, we're missing Simon, who I believe is, you know, one of the, the chief architects um, for you guys. So I'm hoping to see him at future um, events. Um, but Simon, we do miss you dearly. And uh, thank you, you know, for, for putting on what you guys have so far when it comes to Paribus. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about your core services, right? So you guys said you guys are dealing with NFTs, synthetic assets. Um, how does that process work? Because you guys are not peer to peer, right? So you guys have lending pools or um, liquidity pools. Do you mind kind of talking a little bit about how Paribus is structured to work um, both from a lender's perspective as well as a borrower's perspective? Exactly. So the way that we have it structured is we have the liquidity pools that are going to give instant access for people who want to have, you know, loans generated because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the current way that especially NFTs are doing is uh, on the peer-to-peer -peer system, which mm -hmm. is there's there's so many different um, you know ways of actually like executing that particular uh, transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we definitely have the vision to make sure that we have our systems in place that have everything in regards to um, automation, uh, uh, the, the, the speed of everything happening. Mm -hmm. It's going to just be quicker and more efficient. And um, that, that's kind of our plan for, for that side of things. Gotcha, gotcha. Anything you want to add to that, Dennis? Yeah, um, so essentially the thing that sets us apart is uh, our ability to value NFTs, mm -hmm. um, these exotic assets on the, on the go, on the, on the fly, without having to actually interact P2P. So I don't have to come to you and you don't have to and wait for you to give me a valuation on my NFT. It's We have partners, who, I think we have about five partners now, mm -hmm. who actually do this AI-based NFT valuations on their own systems. Uh, what we're doing is we're sort of aggregating all that data, mm -hmm. bringing it into Paribus, and then uh, working out our algorithm 
to say, okay, these are the five data sources that we have received, mm -hmm. and this is how much valuation they think this NFT is worth. And based on that, we do our calculations, and then we give you a parable space valuation. And based on that valuation, if you like it, you just take out your loan instantly. Because if there is the liquidity available, let's mm -hmm. say you want to take out your loan in USDC, we have underlying liquidity pools. And if there is USDC available, you could just take it out immediately. There is no need to sort of uh, come to an agreement. That uh, is highly scalable in mm -hmm. comparison to P2P. Um, but uh, of course, there are shortcomings of this system. The shortcoming main thing is the loan to value. We could offer up to 40 to 50 percent on NFTs, so you could borrow up to 40 to 50 percent of the NFT value. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why we're so conservative with this uh, percentage is because obviously NFTs are not very liquid, they are subject to volatility, mm -hmm. it's a very young um, market. Um, because of this, we have to protect the protocol, so this is why the LTV is low. But over time, as AI gets better at valuing mm -hmm. these stuff and as liquidity improves in the overall NFT market, then we can increase that slowly. Um, alternative method we're actually thinking of, uh, which is going to be quite new, I'm actually going to say it right now for the first time, is awesome. uh, something called a request for quote. So this is utilized in DEXs for large trading. For example, when you're talking about uh, normal assets, let's say you have uh, I don't know, 1 million plus in ETH and you want to buy something else. If you do this for a traditional ETH, there's a slippage problem because um, even on ADA DEXs, there will always be a slippage problem due to the fact that it's decentralized. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you can change that a bit and say, okay, let's open request for quote, which is a very uh, known concept within the traditional finance space, where you say, okay, I have a million dollars, or I have this NFT that's worth, I don't know, 200, $300,000, and I need to get a loan of this much. And you put that request in, mm -hmm. which is basically an on-chain uh, write-up onto a smart contract to say, these are the terms I'm willing to get give for the quote. And if anyone on the other side is a taker um, and has the has the funds to cover that loan, then it would be automatically executed. So it's essentially P2P, but it's it's at a large scale. So it it removes uh, the friction between um, lender and buyer and allows them to come to an agreement without uh, thinking about stuff like gas slippage and all wow. that stuff. So that's something that we're working on as well. But yeah, I mean, the main thing is that instant valuations for us, we can we can do this and a lot of platforms are not able to do this. And once we bring all this data, the Paris backend and the whole protocol can actually offer this as an API service to all other platforms that want to utilize NFT valuations. So rather than integrating with these five or upcoming uh, NFT valuation platforms, because there's going to be more, mm -hmm. um, rather than plugging into each one of these, just plug into Paribus, and Paribus will give you the same data without having to worry about each each provider on the go. Wow, that is a lot to digest. Yeah, sorry, I, I went on a <laughs> No, that's okay. Um, first and foremost, I want, to thank, I want to say thank you for sharing that here with us first. Um, that means a lot. Now, when it comes to the actual NFTs, uh, you've talked about the valuation system. How do you guys actually go about finding collections? How do you guys go about evaluating different collections? Is there a method that you guys are using to kind of capture each um, specific NFT collection and its worth? Or do you guys have like a, a generalized method of providing the value of the NFTs that will be traded um, or borrowed against on your platform? So the main thing is before we can support an NFT collection, it has to go through some sort of filtration process. Mm -hmm. Right now, the filtration process will be done through the Paribus team, mm -hmm. where we would go through certain methodology to say, okay, this, uh, let's say, NFT collection is new, but they have this many followers, they have this much liquidity, volume in the market, they have this many unique holders. And if it ticks certain boxes, we mm -hmm. will whitelist the project to be able to be accepted as a collateral. That's the first step. but. Um, over time, we want to actually outsource this to the public, to mm -hmm. the PBX holders specifically, um, who are the, who are essentially going to be the core of the DAO, who who can take make these decisions on the fly. Because um, uh, obviously, we do not want to be the centralized co-founding team that makes these decisions in the right. long run. So that's why we plan to open this up to the public. Um, in terms of once a whitelist of uh, collection is whitelisted, we don't particularly look at a general method uh, mm -hmm. or general sort of rules of things to say, okay, this this is worth this much, that's worth this much, mm -hmm. because it's very dynamic. The whole thing is very dynamic. You know, you could have a NFT collection that has, I don't know, let's say 100,000 ADA volume in 24 months, but uh, sorry, 24 hours. But um, if we look into the actual collection and the volume trade, if there are wash trades, then it's, it's, it's void data, so it doesn't right. make sense for us. Uh, you can't take a look at floor prices because floor price can easily be manipulated. Right. 
um, and then you can look at bids and asks but you could ask for something as an NFT seller but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it it's so, get fulfilled exactly correct so we have to keep it dynamic we look at many many um, so data points I think we have about 15 16 data points now that wow. we look at okay um, and then we make a decision based on that Wow I would love to hear a little bit more about those data points obviously you know I don't want to put you guys on the spot yeah um, we can always follow up but that's very interesting right because um, normally like when people are thinking about NFTs they're thinking about the basics right floor price trading volume and those kinds of things but to be able to dive deeper into those additional data points I think it's going to be huge for you guys yeah. and making sure that you know these trades that are happening are sustainable and that they make sense right so that's huge um, with that said Wilson anything you want to add in regards to you know to that right there if not I'll shoot you the next question yeah no I think Dennis did an excellent job and kind of yes uh, he's a great speaker the, yeah the, the whole rundown of how we're planning to do uh, the value, evaluation for the NFTs so mm -hmm. we can go to the, the next one if you want. okay awesome so I've been following Paribus since you guys have announced that you guys will be moving to Cardano. I believe you guys started first off as a um, Ethereum native project and you guys have you know, decided to move over into Cardano. So the first question is gonna be, you know, what about Cardano drew you guys in? And then after that, I wanna talk a little bit about the recent launch of your guys' testnet. Okay, yeah. So uh, with Cardano in particular, you know, we definitely wanted to have a blockchain that fit the, the values of like, the core, uh, principles of how we, you know, think a blockchain should be mm -hmm. uh, operation, uh, operational. So, for us, we, we chose a system that had, um, you know, scalability, mm -hmm. had the, the functionality for interoperability from day one, and you know, we definitely believe in Charles and his uh, ideas for the future mm -hmm. of blockchain. Um, you know, for us in particular, we we always, you know, started with the idea of saying, hey, um, you know. We want to have the uh, option to be multi-chain, mm -hmm. but we do, you know, love the values that Cardano provides. So that's kind of the, the main thing that, um, you know, draw us to uh, the Cardano ecosystem, but also gives us the flexibility and optionality for being multi-chain. Got it. Got it. And so. If you guys have not interacted with the Paribus platform just yet, I believe you guys were recently listed on multi-chain, is that correct? Yep, that's right. Right, and so um, I actually did play a little bit around okay, with that good. and that was very seamless. So I was able to basically get an idea of how much it would cost and the process that I would have to take to transfer my Paribus tokens from the Ethereum network, yep. which is an ERC-20 blockchain, to the Cardano blockchain. So that was super awesome to see. Um, it looks like you guys already have scalability and interoperability, you know, you guys are working on that. Sure. And I think that that kind of showed with your collaboration with Multichain. Yep. And so moving along, um, going into the next topic, which I believe was a huge topic within the community, yeah. there was so many questions, you know, on the weekly Twitter spaces that you guys have in regards to the test net. Mm -hmm. And so I believe um, about a week or two ago, you guys officially launched on the test net. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about what your plans are? And if you're not aware, this was on the Gurley Ethereum test net. Uh, but can you kind of explain to the viewers um, what the test net is all about, what your guys' plans are? Sure. And then I believe a little bit about the bounty program as well. And then we'll also get your take on that as well, Dennis. Yeah. yeah. So with the, the test net, really, this is like the first time that the you know, entire community can take a look at like the things that we've been building for, you know, quite a while now. And so I think it's been a great opportunity for people to see, you know, our, our style of our, our platform, the ease of use, uh, the functionality that we're going to be having. So it's it's been a great opportunity. We've had a lot of you know good feedback from it already. And I definitely am looking forward to, you know, seeing how this progresses. Um, you know, the, the negatives of, you know, being in a bear market are obvious. Mm -hmm. The positives are that we have a lot of uh, more opportunities to, you know, go ahead and take our time to do the things correctly and make sure that we're building out the systems in a very methodical way. And we've had that, you know, opportunity uh, given to us. Mm -hmm. And so the, the fact that we have the test net available for everyone now um, it has been a, a really great thing for us. Um, from from the testnet and then just recently we, we announced the bug bounty program mm -hmm. and the bug bounty program has already been successful we've actually already found some minor bugs that were um, missed by you know uh, previous audits and things mm -hmm. like that so that's the kind of thing that we want to make sure we're continuing to you know make sure our protocol is as secure as possible yes. and you know, these are the kind of you know ways that we go about building our platform that make sure that uh, people and the community is, um, you know, entrusting uh, us with, you know, their, their money and that they can feel secure about everything that we're doing. Got it. Very well said, Dennis. Anything you want to add to that? Um, not much. I mean, it wasn't pretty much covered at all. Yeah. Um, but uh, just to add the point about why we chose Cardano and um, sort of how we're progressing forward, mm -hmm. I think 
the reason why we chose Cardinal was um, pretty much articulated well by Wilson mm -hmm. in terms of um, how things are moving and you know it's more of a scientific approach to everything within Cardinal world itself which is great because um, right now um, you're, you're pushed as a co-founder of a project to push out your project as soon right. as possible because everybody wants I don't know I mean it's, some people want to actually utilize the platform some people want to actually pump the price uh, price is not something of uh, something that we think about um, of course it's on the back of our minds because that's where investors come in but uh, we have to we have to make sure that the protocol is safe because when you are pushed to release product as soon as possible mm -hmm. You miss stuff. It's inevitable. You miss stuff, and when you miss stuff, and if it goes down on the mainnet, and you lose a couple of million through a hack or an exploit for a project of our size, which is upcoming, it could be detrimental. We can't. We may not be able to recover from it, even if technically we could recover from it, uh, from the aesthetic and sort of the outlook point of view. Uh, people who have a trust problem. So we're glad that we're taking it one step at a time and the bear market is giving us this opportunity. We don't have to rush things out. Uh, we said we have time and uh, as Wilson said, the immune fire bug bounty has actually found some nice bugs and I'm pretty sure we're gonna have more. Um, and that's with the fact that hacking gave us a 9.5 out of 10 on mm. our code. That's solid. Um, exactly, it's solid and yet there were still bugs mm -hmm. which could have affected how the platform went down. So um, yeah, overall, I think we will carry on at the pace that we've been carrying on because we would rather be slow and steady than fast and break it and come back. I mean, fast and break release schedule may have worked in Web2 world because mm. you can release a product and if anything goes down, it's a web centralized server, you take it back down, fix it, patch it up, right. release a new version. But that's not how it works in the Web3 world. If things go down, it's hard to recover from it. So you have to be careful with what you're doing. Yes, Web3 is definitely a, a lot less forgiving than I think Web2 is. Yeah. Um, but I really like to hear you know, your guys' take on Cardano. I think security and scalability are two things that you know, the Cardano community holds very dear. Um, and I'm glad to see you guys are embracing that. And that's one of the key reasons why you guys made the transition over into Cardano. And so we're gonna go ahead and be wrapping up here within um, just a few minutes. Um, but I wanna kind of get your guys' take on where do you guys see Paribus in the future? Um, and what is your guys' outlook on the ecosystem as a whole um, and what Paribus can actually you know, contribute to it? Sure. So my vision for Paribus is that it should be the first name that comes to mind when you're thinking about NFT lending and borrowing. Mm -hmm. And that's regardless of the chain. That's why we have positioned ourselves uh, to bring liquidity to Cardano, but not to uh, sort of build walls and, and silo ourselves away from every other ecosystem. Mm -hmm. This is why we live on Milk Meadow. We will carry on living on Milk Meadow, and Milk Meadow is expanding into new non-EVM chains like Algorand, which means we will live on Algorand side as well now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want that vision to come to fruition and um, be the name, regardless of which chain, when you think about NFTs and how can I utilize it apart from selling it, Parables should be the first thing that pops in your mind. That's, I, that's the vision. I think you guys are well on your way to that. Anything you want to add, Wilson? No, that was, that was really awesome to kind of put it in that perspective. Um, I mean, also with um, thinking of you know any chain, mm -hmm. but also want to have people think of pretty much any asset as mm -hmm. well. So that have the functionality for, you know, borrowing and lending for any digital asset that's there and maybe possibly into physical assets via a digital you know connector at some point as well wow. so that's kind of uh, the long-term vision that we have awesome 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 so we're going to end on a light note here again i appreciate meeting you guys and i appreciate the opportunity that you guys have given me what's been the most exciting thing for you guys here at rare bloom um so the whole event has been really awesome. I think you know meeting uh, the people that I've always connected with online to actually have the, the opportunity to meet in person has mm -hmm. been really great. Uh, you know, obviously Charles was here, yes. and me and Dennis got to meet him for a little while. I think that was probably the highlight. Did you but guys there, get a picture? We did get a picture. Awesome. And it, it was great. Uh, but there's been so many other uh, awesome people here too, so I don't want to just say him, but um, yeah, the highlight would, would be just communicating with him a little bit. No, so. And like I said, I, I feel like that is very mutual, you know. If you guys didn't come out here, I would not be able to have this interview with you guys. And you guys are so personable in person, you know. I, I can't 
I, I, I can't get this kind of emotion on Telegram, Twitter, Discord, even though you guys are all active in those communities, there's nothing that beats the face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. And so yeah, what definitely. about you, Dennis? What have you enjoyed so far? Yeah, I mean, the whole event, to be honest, it's been great. We got to meet some of our partners. Mm -hmm. um, Damon from Charlie Free is here, so they're obviously our um, Cardano-based Oracle. Uh, we got to meet Sebastian from DC Spark, who's the brains behind Milk Meadow. Uh, we got to physically meet Charles, um, although we've been inter indirectly interacting with him through IOG. Mm -hmm. We got to meet some people from IOG itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's been a great event. We met good people, we made good connections, um, and that's what these events are all about. So we we'll carry on attending these um, as much as we can. Um, and carry on building the name for Paribus. Awesome, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the both of you at future events. And I cannot end this interview without, without saying congratulations on your one year anniversary. Thank you. Um, I was actually a winner of some of the giveaways. And so I was super blown away. You know, I was able to win, I believe it was $100 worth of the PBX token and that was sent right to my Ethereum wallet. So again, thank you guys for that. Thank you for Pleasure. your time. Um, is there any last things you want to say in terms of how people can get in contact with you guys if they're looking to be a part of the Paribus project? Sure. So we're on Telegram. As you said, we're quite active on there. Um, Discord is there and Twitter. Mm -hmm. So any of those channels, you can reach out to us. Uh, we're always around. You can even DM me or Wilson or Simon anytime. But yeah, reach out, uh, see what you can do. We do have an ambassador program, so if you want to actually actively promote Paribus, mm -hmm. we do have that program going on as well. Um, so yeah, reach out to get more information. Awesome, yeah. And I'll go ahead and leave links down in the description below um, to all of the Paribus social media handles. Um, and with that said, Wilson, your closing words. Thank you. I really appreciate the interview and I'm looking forward to doing more. Likewise. Thank you Thank both you. for your time.